In this video, I demonstrate how to set up your scene to render out a simple flip simulation, focusing mainly on how to extract different types of data from the simulation using different DOP import nodes. I'll discuss the difference between a DOP import node and DOP IO node, and then I'll show you how to configure the DOP IO node to prep the scene to render the flip tank fluid. Then I'll explain why we need to render the RBD object from the simulation instead of using the original geometry node. Last, I quickly set up some simple materials and assign it to the respective geometries, the water and the teddy bear. Then I go over the lighting conditions and how to tweak the material so you can get the same look as I did in this animation. The material setup is using the built-in red shift materials, so it's nothing special. Since material setup is not the focus of this video, don't expect much from the material setup. This video mainly focuses on extracting the data from the simulation to prep it for rendering. If you're wondering how to set up the flip tank sim where the teddy falls down, I show that in a different video titled Flip Tank Basics for Beginners, link in the description. So I rendered out the teddy bear scene, and this is how it looks like. This animation has white water added to it. This foam is added to it. Now, that wasn't covered in this video yet, and I'm probably not going to have time to cover in this video, but it'll probably be the next video after this. So I'm just going to go over how to set up. We have the simulation running here. We have it we we know how to set this up however in order to render this it needs to be in uh, a geometry format or it needs to be in a different format as you can see here if i put a render flag on the dot net let's put in the redshift i'm just gonna lower if i put this here camera one i'm just gonna put on a dome light so camera one, this is the angle. It's not gonna render. Yeah, I mean, you see the teddy bears, but you don't see this flip simulation. It needs to be in a different format. As we know, that's where the DOP import comes in. Now this, the DOP import is the one that I've been using in the previous videos. This is not what we're gonna use. There's actually a different one. So if you go to DOP, there's actually quite a few. This one, dot io, is the one we're gonna use for the flip tank simulation to render the flip tank. So dot import is mostly for geometry to turn it into geometry or points or something. But for this one, I'm gonna use the dot io. Now for the dot io, uh, again we have to specify dot network. So that's this guy, and it's asking us for the dot node that we want to render out which would be the flip object so you can search for this in the dot net which is in the flip sim context which is where we are at right now and inside the dot net so we have to look for this dot net that's which is this one and inside there there's a flip object that's what uh we're trying to convert the fluid that would be this guy. So I'm going to turn this render off. Let's go back to the uh, geometry. So we're still not getting anything. Now if you look carefully, the presets, we have to actually set what fields to bring in. So if you take a look in the geometry, especially there's nothing. We're bringing in nothing because we haven't specified what fields to bring in. So choose flip fluid. There's our particles. Now I'm gonna compress all this data. So this just makes the data more compact. Particles, fluid surface. This will convert it into a fluid. That's what we've seen. Now 
And it's probably a good idea to put in the file cache because this does take a while to um, one to cook and then compress and then convert it into the particle fluid surface. The fluid compressed not as uh, it doesn't take as long, but the particle fluid surface will take a little longer, and as well, of course, the cooking will take quite a while. Throw it down, and then you can just cash it out. Now, you probably noticed that there's no teddy bears. This only brings in the fluid. Now, how do we bring in the teddy bear? Because I, I can't just, like, leaving this flag on doesn't do anything. That, that's just up there. That's just the teddy bear being up there. That's the stationary uh, spot that he's at, right up there. That's not what I want to render. Because if you remember correctly, in the flip uh, simulation, the teddy bears are imported as RBD objects. So they are part of the simulation. They drop into this tank. So we really don't need this flag. Rendering the, the teddy bear up here doesn't help us at all. So I'm going to turn off the render flag off this uh, the teddy bear, the initial geometry. Go back into the flip sim. Now, I'm going to use my good old dop import. Now, this is the one that I've been using in my previous videos. Drop in the dot net here, specify what it is, and then import style. What do I want to import? I want to, sorry, I want to want to import fetch geometry from dot network. Okay, but it's getting, now it's getting all the particles and the teddy bear. Now, I just want the teddy bear. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. Over here, for the .NET, what does it have? It has this uh, tr tree diagram. And it has a flip object, which we've imported the flip object into this dot import. And then we have a ground plane, which we don't need. But I want to port these three guys. These three RBD objects is what I want to uh, import, uh, grab, outside, uh, extract. I want to extract these the data from these three RBD objects from the DOP simulation, from the flip simulation. I, I want to extract that data and bring it into this context. So what we do, it goes object mask. So it's asking you, what do you want to extract? What objects do you want to extract? R, B, D. And the asterisk is actually wildcard. So it can be anything that begins with R, B, D. And as you can see here, we have R, B, D, object one, two, three. So what this will do, it will uh, find everything that begins with R, B, D. So now we have the three teddy bears extracted. So we can put down a render node. You gotta have both of them. You can actually merge this together, but I wouldn't, like, you can. Just to view what it looks like, if that's what you want. Sorry. But I wouldn't merge it like this. Because you need to apply a material to this flip simulation. So the material goes here. Or you can apply the material here. So you, material here. This would be a teddy bear material you can put down for it. And a material here. A water material for this one. That's one way to do it. And then you can merge it down. So I'm going to quickly... Oh. I'm just going to quickly 
make a water material like super fast. You probably want to take more time into choosing the color and um, and tweak all the parameter settings. I'm gonna choose a red color. Sure. I'm gonna go back. Flip simulation here. plastic and this one would be my water I'm gonna come up here if you remember correctly we have the teddy bear here this is our original teddy bear geometry let me show it to you in the 3d viewport So this teddy bear is all the way up here, but I, I, I can't render th that one because this one is a static object. Now I want to show you, if I render it out now, like, okay, I have the render flag on our original teddy bear. This is the static object that I prep uh, the drop down, the position of the drop down before it enters the simulation. If I turn this off, turn it on. So this is, he's statically in the air. We're on frame 61 and he's uh, still not within close range of the, he's not falling. He's not even close to the water. If I go to, uh, okay, let's go to this flip sim. Let's turn, let's go to the render. Let's render a frame. Let's render frame 61. Now let's render this here. So Oliver's over here. This is inside the simulation. We're inside the flip simulation at frame 61. Let me just drop down a merge just to show you. So Oliver's supposed to be uh, falling into the fluid right now. So we can just delete this. I don't need that. I just want to show you the difference between rendering this Oliver and this Oliver. So I'm going to turn off the render flag. So we're only rendering this Oliver over here. And I don't see him anywhere in here. That's because he's still in the air over here. He's not even close to the simulation over here. So that's the importance of rendering between the RBD object over here, this one, which actually is these guys. These guys are the dynamic objects. They're actually doing something. They're affected by the simulation. This is the results of the simulation data. So this is the result of the gravity affecting Oliver and Oliver falling down. That's the result of it. This is just your input data. This is just the data we feed into the simulation telling the simulation where to begin. We want Oliver to begin here. This is what we feed into the simulation. This is our input data. So I'm gonna add a new camera. Then I'm gonna come here and render the second camera out. Okay, now, uh, cause this teddy bear, the original static teddy bear doesn't have a material on it. I'm just gonna really quickly make a new material. I'm just copying that one over. I want, I want this one. Okay, so this, the blue one is our static original teddy bear. Once I turn off this flag, He's no longer there. So these three red teddy bears are rendering from this simulation at frame 61. Frame 61 is the rendering flip sim 
simulation uh, results. The results of the teddy bear falling into the water. So if I enable both, this is the simulation data. The results of the teddy bear falling in. This is the blue one, is our static, is our input data. Now, we have, we've done this merge here only just to illustrate uh, that it works. This is not the proper way to do this. We're going to put an object merge in here and back into this original uh, geometry node and bring the results of the this flip sim data back into this geometry node. Then we'll have the results. So we have the input coming from this blue one. We put the input data into the simulation and then we extract the results. After Houdini calculates the simulation, we grab the results of the simulation data and we grab it back and put it back into the geometry. After assigning the material to the respective geometry, you'll find that even if you render it, it'll, it'll only render the one that you have the render flag on. The problem is we have two objects now, one for the water and one for the plastic. So if I switch the render flag over here, it'll only render the teddy. And if I switch it over here, it'll only render the water. However, I want to render both. Now, you could say that you could merge it. This would fix it. However, it's it, it's not the best solution. But I'm just going to show it to you uh, so that you see that it works. Now, we're not going to render it like this. I'm going to keep the render flag on the water. This is not affected by the simulation. So what can we do? We can go into here and drop down object merge. So I'm going to label this Oliver sim data. Uh, sim. Well, I, uh, it's not really data. Sim. I'm going to bring in the teddy bear from the simulation, the one that is affected by the simulation. I want the results of the teddy bear after the simulation. Him, uh, Oliver, affected by the gravity. I'm going to turn off the template. There's Oliver. So he is falling in. And we put down a null here. I'm going to call this render. So we're going to render this one. And that way, uh, it's more organized. So we couldn't render the original teddy bear, like this original teddy bear, because this one is actually static. But we can put down an object merge node and bring in the results of the teddy bear affected by the simulation. Which is this guy. So basically the object merge node is bringing in this into back into this geometry, our re original geometry node. So this way it's more organized. I can even put something here. Oh, simulated all of our teddy. So this way it's more organized. We render this out now. So there's our teddy bear. So I had rendered this animation out, so I can show it to you. This is what it looks like. So we have our teddy bear and we have our water. So as you can see here, the render that we've done looks nothing like what I showed at the beginning of the tutorial. This.
Now, if it, th these white bubbles are created with by uh, the white water, the white water will not be covered in this video. However, I will show you how to get this material, like this water, this blue water looks nothing, what we have right now looks nothing like this. So our mat our water material is not even see-through. We I can't even see what Oliver looks like. It, right now, it's a black shadow blob within the water. Here, this is see-through. I can actually make out some of the features on um, Oliver's face. So let's tweak the water material. So this is the R water material. Base properties. I want to actually see Oliver when he's inside the fluid. The transmittent color is giving uh, the water the blueness. Let's turn down the absorption scale so it's like 0 0.5 and see what happens. Okay, we see a little bit more. I can make out a little bit of the red. It's starting to show. What if I turn it to 0 0.1? Now I can see him very clearly. However, the water is a bit uh, too clear. So I'm going to turn this back up just a bit, 0 0.2. I think that looks nice. Now let's go back. It still looks different. But we're getting closer. Now when you're rendering water, you need good lighting. You need HDR lighting. This is the default Redshift dome light that I brought in. And as you can see, there's no HDR lighting to it. Now I had brought in uh, two HDR light maps ahead of time. So I'm going to turn this default one off. I'm going to start the render. Turn this guy off. So we should get darkness. And we're gonna, not going to use this anymore. Let's start with the water. This light. Actually, let's start from scratch. And I'll rebuild it from a default dome light. So the light's coming from this one right now. So these two are off. Uh, let's switch to uh, frame 61. So we have a nice frame. Now I'm going to use these guys, these two for references. So here I'm going to bring in the HDR uh, light map. So I got this light map from hdrhaven.com. You can, when you're rendering water, you want a high contrast light map. So in hdrhaven.com, they have conveniently have a search criteria that you can search for high contrast HDR light maps, which is very convenient. Now, right after entering just putting the dome map in. You can see there's a huge difference between this one. Actually, let me take it out. I'm going to take a snapshot. Put it back in. So then we can compare. So this is what it was before and after. Well, yeah, this one has a background, but as you can see, the material of the water looks very different. Map in. You can actually turn the map around. You can rotate it. Let me illustrate this here. Which give you, gives you a total different lighting. That looks pretty good. And also you need 
a better camera angle. So this angle is not the same angle I used before. So let's try adjusting the camera. It's starting to get there. So let's disable the background again. It's starting to look like what I had before. Okay, this is what I had before. So this material looks... It, it looks similar now. The color is a little different. And the material color for the teddy bear is a little different too. It's actually this... The one used on the left is a red plastic material. The one on the right is a green jade material. Now we can do... Uh, we can switch it over. Material. So for the plastic, I'm going to change it to jade. And I believe I had a deeper color jade. Something like that. Now this dome light is affecting everything in the scene. I actually want the light to only affect the water. So how can we do that? The dome, uh, select the dome light, go to objects, enable light mesh. Now I'm just going to pick the sim. This is the water. And I'm going to create a little geometry. The issue is here in the flip sim. I merged them both together, the water and uh, the teddy bear. They're merged together, so I don't want that. Let's remove it. So it's got, the render flag is on the water. Let's go back up here. Put down an object merge. All over render. I should probably put a null after that, but... So let me go back to the light dome objects. Let me disable this. So this is what we had. This is light affecting everything in the scene. So now we can see all of her. Now I'm after I enable this because I put in flip sim. So light for this dome light is only affecting what I selected here, which is the water. This is because I want a different lighting condition for the water and a different one for the teddy bear. Let's add another dome light. So now this is another redshift dome light. Now I have these color hex values I recorded ahead of time because I was it takes a while to play around with it until you can get the right color that you want. But for filming purposes, I'm just gonna I prepared before I'm going to turn this up okay let's see so it still looks a little different in the render uh, especially with the teddy bear this reflection it looks a little softer like uh, like it's smoother now this is using the jade material with the redshift uh, the redshift jade material. So let's go into our uh, redshift ROP. Redshift. Global illumination. Now the GI, you need to choose something. I was using brute force. The, uh, you'll get that nice soft teddy bear look. I'll demonstrate how to create the white water for the scene in a different video. If you check back in a couple of weeks, I'll update the description with the new link when I'm done with the white water video.